Dan Ullman, Mike Beer, taking a look at the race preceding the Kentucky Derby. It's a $1 million purse. They're going a mile and an eighth on the turf in the old Forrester Turf Classic. Let's take a look at this field. And one of the better turf horses, if not the best turf horse in the country right now, is likely to start the favorite. And that is the number 12, Bricks and Mortar, who is always a talented horse for Chad Brown. Just look at what he did as a three-year-old. And then... Disaster. Yeah. He missed a year and a half. Well, patience has paid off for Chad. He's come back off a long layoff. He's not only won three races in a row, he won the very rich Pegasus World Turf Cup. Last time out in the Muniz Memorial, were you a little bit disappointed? I know there was no pace, yeah. but he was up close to that pace. Yeah, well, they had to take him out of his game a little bit, I yeah. think, because they were just walking in front of him. Um, so I read did the right thing, and he put him up close because he knew they were going slow. He put him up close under a very big hold, though. Um, and he had to work hard to get by uh, Market Off, who just, for whatever reason, um, would not give an inch in the stretch. But Brooks and Mortar got it done. I would I'll actually give him some credit for winning that race because he easily could have lost, but he got it done. And as you say, his first two starts off that long layoff, man, he came back better than ever. If he if he shows up here in form and he gets the right trip, he's just going to be a handful in here. Mark it off got a great ride from Tyler Gaffalione in that race. He realized there was no pace. He got this horse to go 51, 115 for six furlongs. And he made bricks and mortar fight all the way down to the wire. He's just not the caliber of that horse. He's two for 23 lifetime. And the question I have for you is, if he couldn't do it in that spot right. where he made an easy lead, right. how is he going to do it here where he may not make that trip? Yeah, I mean, he's probably not. Um, he's, he's a rock-solid horse. He's not really a, a legit graded stakes kind of horse. He ran great last time, and he couldn't get it done, and now things are going to be a lot different this time. Chad this. Brown also has the two Raging Bull. Of course, he has the favorite. Raging Bull won the Grade 1 Hollywood Derby in his final star as a three-year-old coming from way off of the pace. Now, his first start this year was the Makers 46 Mile. Several horses in this race coming mm -hmm. out of the Makers 46. I thought he broke fine. He ended up three wide most of the way, and he was kind of even in the stretch. And I wonder if he it, that race was a race where Chad ran a little bit of a short horse. Yeah, it, it felt like that, didn't it? It felt like maybe he needed that race because... All in all, the trip worked out pretty well. There was a solid enough pace going on for a grade one race, and obviously the winner came last to first and stormed by this horse in the stretch. And he just felt like he was really working at it, couldn't quite get up for second or third, but he was trying. I think he needed that race. I think he'll take a step forward here. But he has to do that. He's a new four-year-old he's supposed to improve, but he's got he's to gotta up his game a little bit against these horses. Let's talk about the Timeform U.S. pace projector for this race because scratches might alter it. Remember, you can visit timeformus.com after scratches are official. This pace projector projector will update. Prime Attraction has entered on Friday in the Ali Sheba yeah. Stakes where he would face the daunting task of trying McKinsey one more time. He has run very well on the turf in the past, including his most recent turf effort last summer in the Eddie Reed, where he cleared the lead uh, going into the uh, first turn, took two-ply pressure on the far turn, and still was fighting out all the way to the end. It took a nice source and catapult, yeah. the next out winner of the Eddie Reed with a 105, uh, Delmar Mile, pardon me, with a 104 buyer to beat him. He's just not the most trustworthy horse in the world. He doesn't win very often. He's right. very goofy with his lead changes. But if you give him an easy lead, and the yeah. scenario is the same as Market Off's last time out, right. he's a better horse than Market Off. Oh, he sure is, yeah. If he can somehow find his way to get loose on the lead in here, I guess he'll be tough. You know, he's run a bunch of good races. I think you know, we talked about this a little bit before, and I don't know if you agree with this or not, but I look at him, and I'm a fan of his, but... I think he looks better on paper than he actually is, um, and that's not. And I'm not trying to knock this horse because he's run really well, but I, I think he looks a little bit paper, better on paper than he actually is. Um, and I don't really like him that much in this race, but I guess if he gets loose, he's tough. If he scratches, that would put Clyde's Image on the lead, and Clyde's Image ran a super race in the Makers 46 last time out. It was a stunning performance, considering he was 46 to one, and he had a big look at it in the stretch, finishing second to Delta Prince. By far, his career best performance. If he's able to make the lead, uh, I think he's dangerous in here, but I do have some questions about the mile and an eighth, and I kind of have to see that race again. Yeah, I do too. Uh, he did run really well. Oh, yeah. I'm not knocking him, um, but I, I'm worried about how far he wants to go, and I'm worried um, that he won't be able to back that race up in this battle. We'll see if he can do it. Kerban is third. That's the number one on our time form U.S. pace projector, and that's where he was in the Makers 46. I thought he was sitting a great trip, just tracking the pace down towards the inside. He had every chance in the stretch, yeah. and as he does in most of his races, his lead changes are terrible, and maybe that's why Kieran is putting the blinkers on, trying to get him to focus a little bit better. Because the talent's there. He's yeah. run some fast races. I just think he's kind of beaten himself at some point. He's pretty good. He's shown up, and he's run every time for Kieran so far, and he, I'm with you. I liked him in that Makers 46 last time. 
wrong again. He got a perfect trip, though, and he was right there at the top of the stretch. Couldn't quite fight off Clyde's image, and then he was never going to hold Delta Prince. I don't know, Dan, I think he ran well last time. And you know what? He could get that trip again, and that would go a long way towards success in this race. But I just don't know if I want to go back to him after that last one. I wonder if the eight breaking the rules is a horse that we're going to look back in the fall and summer and say, how come we didn't have him? Yeah. Because he is a horse that just looks like the typical shug, late developing, late blooming type. He's got a big stretch kick. We saw that in the Tropical Park Derby two starts back. Last time in the Canadian turf, I was just disappointed that he didn't beat Krampus. I mean, that's a horse I think he's supposed to beat. I know Krampus got the jump on him that yep. day. He didn't get it done. But Shug, despite that loss and despite a couple of months layoff and despite the fact that he's never won a graded stakes, yeah. is running him in here. Yeah, a big time race here. And I, I feel like Shug might have been pointing to this race all along. So, you know, we'll see what happens. I personally love I love his turf races. All of his turf starts to me are really good. I w I'm with you in that I was disappointed that he didn't win last time, but they just walked in front of him, and then he just couldn't get by a horse who had a little bit of a jump, jump on him. I don't think it was a terrible performance. I think the mile and eighth could be good for this horse. I think he can get a good mid-pack trip in this race. I think he's a big threat to take a big step forward in this race. I think you can make the argument that the number nine synchrony ran every bit as well as bricks and mortar and mark it off in the Muniz Memorial last time out. We talked about the lack of pace in that race, and Joe Bravo tried to get him close on the backstretch by splitting horses, but he ended up getting shuffled a yeah. little bit out of there, and then he was down inside in behind horses into the stretch. He had to alter course sharply late. It was just too much ground to make up yeah. considering the slow pace. I think he ran great that day. He is a multiple graded stakes winner. He's earned almost three quarters of a million dollars over that. And now he's getting blinkers for the first time. I know you don't like the blinkers move, but I think Synchrony ran just as well in yeah. bricks and mortar, and I gotta use him. Yeah, I'm using him too. I, I'm with you. He, he ran great last time. I, I kind of don't understand um, the blinker change in this race because if nothing else, this horse has been remarkably consistent. Um, his turf form, since they switched him over in 2017, I mean, he, he very rarely runs a bad one. I feel like he, he wants firm ground. I, I feel like cutting the ground doesn't help this horse. So we'll see what happens on Saturday. But if he gets firm and he's a fair price, I'm using this horse. He, he shows up and he runs every time. Chad Brown's third entrant in the race is the 10 Ticonderoga. This is a horse that, like Carabon, is not the most professional of sorts. He kind of beats himself sometimes when he loses, but you put him in the right spot and he's gonna look very, very good as he's done in his last two races. I wonder if at the ripe old age of five, he yeah. is starting to figure this game out. He's always had the natural talent. Yeah. It just seems like a tough spot. Yeah, he's one of my favorite horses. I feel like he has a ton of ability, but for whatever reason, he just can't put it all together. I, I'm starting to feel like He's just not going to turn out to be a real graded stakes horse, but we'll see. Chad's pressing on with him here off of a couple of wins against weaker horses. He is a little bit of a, a tough horse to ride, a little bit of an inside runner, too. It almost feels like when he gets into the stretch, he wants to go towards the rail and not out to the clear, and that works against him sometimes. But he's got plenty of ability. If he can catch a pace to run into, I think he'll be running at the end. Formulator fact for a big price, the four Sabador is cross-entered in a race on Thursday. Connor Murphy does well with older turf horses adding Lasix. Doesn't have many of them. Two for 10, though, a 238 ROI. Did not break well from the far outside yeah. post in his North American debut at Keeneland, but he was 55 to 1 against much tougher horses, and he flattened out late. Even with this uh, formulator fact, he's kind of hard to recommend. I mean, this is just a really tough spot for him. I watched his last race and felt like they were giving him one off the layoff. It didn't really feel like um, they were too interested in getting him involved. They just let him sort of race on through the stretch. I don't know what that means for him running in this race, if he runs here, because this is a really tough spot, but I feel like they were using that race to get somewhere else. Next chair says quality, won the grade, well, Shad, grade one Shadwell turf mile over a track with some cut in the ground, but has run very well over firm turf courses in Southern California as well. Last time out in the Kilroe was his first start since the Pegasus. He didn't really run as great as I as, yeah, he, as I expected him to run. I thought he would run a lot better, but at least the fourth place horse, River Boyne, came back to run second in the San Francisco Mile with a 96 buyer. Next year's might be a kind of horse that can't be too close to a moderate pace. Yeah, he may yeah, need pace and just be a one run closer. Yeah, take him back and make one run. Um, he's supposed to do better second off the layoff here. Um, I guess the real question with him is, um, can he get the right trip? Can he run down some of these? Does he want a mile and an eighth? I'm not so sure that he does. I know that he's won over this distance before. I think he might be better as a miler. Mile and eighth might be a little short for multiplier. Looks like he could run all day long, but he's in the grade three Illinois Derby on dirt at a mile and an eighth. Yeah. He has a turf win at a mile and an eighth. And his first start for Bill Mott and his first start as a gelding, he ran quite well against yeah. graded class That's Inspector nice. Lindley last time out. There was a good pace, as you mentioned, yeah. to set him up. and. 
these are just tougher horses. Yeah, it's it's he's okay on turf. He's run some okay races. I, for whatever reason, I think I'm probably wrong about this, but I still like him better as a dirt horse. Um, we'll see. I don't I don't like him that much. In races cross, like this on turf. And he's cross centered on dirt on Friday. March to the Arch was visually impressive, beating Florida Breds in his seasonal debut. It was an example of Mark Cassie spotting the horse in the right place. Uh, very visually impressive. Fig didn't come back the right, right way. He has run some nice races. I yeah. think he's usable on the bottom of single race exotics. Yeah, I kind of agree with you. At a big price, maybe throw yeah. him in underneath. I think he really wants the mile and an eighth. Um, he's got the prep under his belt. Maybe he can jump forward now. Um, and his second start is a four-year-old. He's run some nice races this horse. But we are weasels, chalky yeah, ones at that, as we take a look at our selection in the old Forester Turf Classic. Bricks and Mortar's been on a roll since returning from the long layoff. I think he might have it a little bit tougher in this race, but I'm going to use him. I'm going to use Synchrony also hard in multiple race wagers. The one and the six are going to be my underneath. Mm -hmm. 12, 9, 1, 6. You're going with Bricks and Mortar on top. Yeah, Bricks and Mortar. I'm with you. I'll use Synchrony as well, but I'm definitely using uh, Shug's horse, the eight break in the I've got to use that horse. I know it's a tough spot for him, but I like this horse on turf. Mike's going 12, 8, 9, 10 in the grade one old Forrester Turf Classic. We're leading up to the Kentucky Derby. The old Forrester has an approximate post time of 525 Eastern. Best of luck.